What is up, Solo Cups? My name is John Solo, and the story of Hades kidnapping Persephone is one of the most famous stories in all of mythology. We've talked about it here on the channel many a times before, but today we're taking a brand new perspective. I recently completed Supergiant Games' Hades, a roguelike where you play as Persephone and Hades' son, Zagreus, as he attempts to escape the underworld over and over and over again. I found the game absolutely addicting, not just because of the exciting, challenging, and satisfying game play or because you can give Cerberus pets, but also because, as a mythology fan, I was seriously impressed at the creative spins they were able to put on these ancient stories. But this game also raised some questions. Like who the hell is Zagreus? Did Hades and Persephone actually have a son? Was he a god? If so, what was he the god of? And was he worshipped like the others? These are the questions that our resident folklorist Jack Daly and I took on, and through extensive research, we found some disturbing answers. I'm talking maybe the worst things that Zeus and Hera have ever done, and today I'm comparing the story of Zagreus in-game with his very messed up origin story. If you haven't already, be sure to make a blood sacrifice to those like and subscribe gods if you want more content about mythology and folklore sent to your sub box every week. And without further ado, let's dive in. So the tricky thing about the Hades game is that its foundation is built on the framework of more than one famous myth meaning we have several options for where and how to start. But there is one particular moment you could call the catalyst of the story's events, and that's the kidnapping of Persephone. We all know the story in real mythology. Hades fell in love with Persephone at first sight, asked her father, his brother, Zeus, for his blessing to marry her, and Zeus said it was fine as long as Persephone's mother, their sister Demeter, didn't know about it because she would never approve. The way the Hades game tells the story, though, Hades himself had the least to do with the kidnapping. He simply made a passing comment about Persephone's beauty to Zeus, and Zeus, who felt bad about Hades getting stuck with overseeing the underworld, simply whisked her off Olympus and brought her to him. The good news is that, unlike the myth, the game's Persephone was actually tired of living with the Olympians and wanted to leave anyway. Also unlike the myth, Hades didn't want to be with Persephone if it meant her abduction and isolation from her family. That's just not a good way to start a relationship. The bad news is that Hades couldn't just send her away. Not only did she not want to go back to Olympus, but if Demeter was clued in on Hades and Zeus's involvement in her disappearance, it could start the war to end all wars. So Hades and Persephone gave the relationship a shot. And while things were a little rough going at first, it wasn't long before the newly crowned queen of the underworld grew accustomed to her new home and became the only person that the all-powerful, all-terrifying Hades could be his true, vulnerable self around. This is where Zagreus enters the story, and the two versions of his birth are very different, but equally tragic. Before I go any further though, I want to take a moment to honor the wine god Dionysus and say thank you to our sponsor, Bright Cellars. Listen, Solo fam, I've been a beer drinker since I started consuming alcohol at the legal age of 21 and not a day sooner. But I've got to admit something. It's not out of choice, it's out of necessity. I don't drink wine because I'm scared. I don't know enough about it to tell whether it's sweet or bitter, dark or light, earthy or whatever the opposite of earthy would be. But I don't like that about myself. The older I get, the more I want to expand my horizons. Not to mention, I've got to pay my respects to Dionysus. You all know what the Greek gods can do if they feel neglected. That's why when Bright Sellers hit me up about sponsoring the show, I knew it was a match made in Olympus. Bright Sellers is the wine club that allows you to try hundreds of new, exclusive wine brands by sending you bottles from small vineyards all over the world every month. Even better, these wines are all curated to your palate. All you've got to do is take a simple seven question quiz so they can gather your taste preferences and send you wines you're guaranteed to love. When I took mine, I made it very clear that I have the palate of a child, so they sent me a bunch of real sweet white wines that Lauren and I enjoyed very much. Our favorite was probably the Azuli. It was light, refreshing, and now we're going to order a thousand more bottles. What's also really cool about Bright Cellars is they teach you about wine while you're drinking it. Every box comes with wine education cards for each bottle that outlines the tasting notes, suggested pairings, best serving temperature, and origin. So if you want to give Bright Sellers a try, I've got the hookup. They're giving you all a limited time offer of 50% off your first six bottle box. Just go to bit.ly slash Bright Sellers John Solo 3 or hit the link in the description to get started. Thank you. 
in the game, we're told that Zagreus is born to an overjoyed Persephone and moderately enthused Hades, but dies only a few moments after his arrival. There's no explanation as to why, he just dies. And when Zag finally meets Persephone in game, she recalls the visual of seeing the newborn god's flaming feet go out. Naturally, the heartbroken Persephone could no longer stand living in the realm of death as it reminded her too much of her son's fate. So with the help of Nyx, she left the underworld, found a hidden spot on the Earth's surface, and left behind this note for Hades. I can no longer tolerate my life here in this place. So I'm leaving, even if it kills me. I won't be returning to Olympus. If there is a place where I belong in this world, it must be somewhere between heaven and hell. Perhaps it's on the coast and has a little garden. Take care of Cerberus. I shall miss him. Persephone. Now don't get me wrong, the idea that Hades and Persephone would split over the death of their newborn son is depressing, and it makes quite a statement considering they preside over death. Literally, Thanatos works for that. But the real myth behind Zagreus' birth and death is straight up disturbing. According to our research, there is one ancient source that claims Hades is Zagreus' father. In Aeschylus' poem Sisyphus, dated to 5th century BCE, there's the quote, Now I came to bid farewell to Zagreus and to his sire, the Hospitaller. Sire being another term for father, and Hospitaller being an epithet for Hades. But all of our other sources, including the much more complete Dionysiaca, Fabuli, and Orphic hymns, say that Zagreus' father was not Hades, but Zeus. Kind of funny when you consider that in the game, Zeus jokes around about telling people that Zagreus is his son. So, sometime after Persephone was kidnapped by Hades, but before they ever consummated their marriage, her father Zeus took it upon himself to pop her pomegranate. While in the form of a snake, Zeus slithered into Persephone's chambers where she was sleeping, then he slithered into Persephone. This complete and total violation of his daughter is what led to the birth of his son slash grandson, Zagreus, whose name means hunter of animals. A fact that Artemis is kind enough to share with us in the game. Your name, it means great hunter, Zagreus. I guess your mother Nyx must have expected someday that you'd pick up a few pointers from myself. Where the game is different though is that Achilles theorizes Zag is the god of blood, where in real mythology Zagreus is a chthonic hunting god as his name implies. These domains are not mutually exclusive, in fact you could argue that blood goes hand in hand with hunting, but none of our ancient resources make any mention of it. They do associate him with lightning though, and you're about to see why. It wasn't long after Zagreus' birth that he proved his potential to his father Zeus by crawling up to his throne on the peak of Olympus, pulling himself onto it, and wielding one of the king's personally made lightning bolts in his hands. Lightning bolts that, up until now, could only be controlled by Zeus and the blacksmiths who made them. This kid was special, and Zeus knew it. He'd already had many children at this point, but not one of them had proven themselves worthy of inheriting his throne. Thus, he had never considered retirement. But if Zagreus could wield the lightning at such an early age, it was more than likely he would take on rattling thunder and showers of rain. And with that amount of power, he could very well be the next king. Now, I don't know about you, but I can't help but wondering if this myth where Zagreus picks up the lightning bolt had anything to do with Zagreus' ability to wield the powers of other gods in the game, including Zeus's, which are some of my personal favorites. I was also reminded of that scene in the Disney movie where baby Hercules takes a lightning bolt out of Zeus's satchel and starts playing with it. Just like in the mythology, the only other god we see wield the bolts in the whole movie is the one who makes them, Hephaestus. So this could very well be a subtle nod to Zeus's proud father moment with Zagreus. Duh. So while Zeus was busy fawning over Zeus Jr., his wife Hera couldn't help but notice that baby didn't come out of her, which meant her husband had to have slept with another woman. And that meant that baby had to die. You can see why she's the goddess of motherhood. Hera reached out to the old gods, the Titans, and told them that now was the time to get revenge on Zeus for his hostile takeover all those years ago. All they had to do was kill Zagreus, and Zeus would be so broken from the loss of his favorite child that he wouldn't have the strength to fend them off from Olympus. And this seemed like a good plan to the Titans, who would jump at any opportunity to hit Zeus where it hurts. Now, there are several versions of how the Titans get the better of Zagreus. In one telling, they jump him while he's out hunting by himself. In another, they catch him off guard while he's looking in a mirror, which is kind of funny when you consider the mirror in the game makes Zagreus stronger. But in what I think is the darkest version of the story, the Titans lure Zagreus to them by offering him toys. And once his guard is down, 
they attack. Despite his young age and being taken by surprise, the powerful Zagreus put up one hell of a fight and did some damage on the Titans by taking the form of a serpent, a lion, a tiger, and a bull. But Hera, who was watching from above, let out a terrible shriek of anger that rendered him powerless. And it was when he was at his weakest that the Titans each seized a limb and gleefully took their turns chopping them off one by one. And that's not all. After cutting Zagreus into little pieces, they roasted him over a fire and began to eat him. Zeus, who smelled the burning flesh and wanted to investigate the source, was not distraught by what he discovered like Hera predicted. He was enraged, and using his thunderbolts, he single-handedly reduced the Titans to ash. Ash that would go on to be used to create the first humans. As you all can see, the Zagreus of real mythology had a pretty short life. Even with how fast gods age, he still didn't make it past being a toddler. Meanwhile, the Zagreus in the game has at least gotten to his teenage phase. What's that about? This is where things start to get a little confusing, so you're gonna wanna listen closely. Both Zagreuses, the one in the game and the one in the myth, were resurrected after their deaths. However, the Zagreus in the myth was reborn as a completely different god. Let me explain. In the game, after Zagreus died, Nyx brought him to the Fates. Nyx is the goddess of night and mother to the Fates, so she had a certain amount of influence over them, and she convinced them to bring Zagreus back to life. This was an incredible and selfless gesture by Nyx one that Persephone would never be able to repay. The only issue was that Persephone didn't even know what happened. By this point, she had already disappeared on the surface, and ancient magic even more powerful than Nyx bound her to the underworld and prevented her from leaving to search for the queen herself. Unable to go to Hades or the Olympians for help, Nyx decided that from that point onward, she would raise Zagreus as her own alongside her twin sons, Thanatos and Hypnos, the gods of death and sleep. Then, when Zagreus was old enough and strong enough, he would break free from the underworld and find her himself, which brings us to the start of the game. The real Zagreus' resurrection was a little different than that. See, when he was torn to pieces by the Titans, the goddess Athena salvaged his heart before the Titans could devour it. Then, under the orders of Zeus, she either placed it into a statue and breathed life into it, or turned it into a potion for Zeus's lover Semele to drink so she would carry the baby. I know, it's kind of weird to ask one of his many mistresses to do it, but it's not like she could ask Hera. Then again, maybe she should have, because as soon as Hera found out the baby was rescued and implanted into another one of Zeus's side pieces, she once again became laser focused on making sure it was never born. Now as efficient and entertaining as setting the Titans on Zagreus was, she had to be a little more subtle in her approach this time around. So while disguised as an old lady, she struck up a conversation with Semele about her current lover and started planting seeds of doubt that he really was who he claimed. Then, the next time Semele saw Zeus, she demanded that he show her his true form. He really didn't want to and insisted that being near his awesome powers would destroy her, but Semele wouldn't relent. And when the king of the gods finally revealed himself fully, the poor maiden was obliterated. The baby inside her wasn't though. Don't get me wrong, he was not in good shape, but he survived. And at this point, Zeus realized that the only way he could ensure his son's survival from his wife would be to incubate him himself. So he picked up the fetus of the former Zagreus and sewed him into his own thigh or his ball sack, depending on your interpretation. And that fetus would one day finally be born again as Dionysus, the god of wine. And I don't think anyone can blame my boy Dion for his drinking problem. If you had to go through that much trauma just to exist, your domain would probably be the same. Okay, I know I've made that joke before, but with the murder of Zagreus adding another whole layer to the awfulness, I think it's fitting. Now, would it surprise you if I said the ancient Greeks also considered Zagreus a god of rebirth? Because after hearing all that, it really shouldn't. I just wanna know if that had any influence on Supergiant Games' decision to make Hades a roguelike. Because I would argue there is no better protagonist for a game where you're constantly being killed and resurrected than the god of being killed and resurrected. As I mentioned earlier, one of my favorite elements of the Hades game was how creatively they were able to tie in real mythology with the mythology they created for the game. What's really impressive though, is that in many instances, they address the real world version of the myth directly, then explain how foolish mortals like us 
misinterpreted what actually happened, which is the game's version of the myth. A prime example would be the story of Zagreus himself. One of our few resources for information on the god is Orpheus' hymn to Dionysus. For those who need a refresher, Orpheus was the most talented musician in all of Greece, and one day his wife Eurydice was tragically killed after she was chased into a nest of vipers by a particularly horny goat man. After her death, Orpheus traveled to the underworld and personally asked Hades and Persephone to reconsider claiming her soul, and they agreed to release her if Orpheus would turn around and exit the underworld without looking back. The musician did as he was told, but in the final stretch, right before the exit, his faith in the gods faltered and he snuck a glance over his shoulder, a decision he would forever regret when he saw his one true love spirit vanish before his eyes. After this incident, Orpheus just couldn't live with himself anymore and truly didn't care whether he lived or died. And while there's multiple versions of his death, one telling claims he was torn to pieces by followers of Dionysus for refusing to honor him. Well, Orpheus also happens to be in the game, and he also writes a song of his own. In the game, after Orpheus dies, he's given a special title as the court musician in the House of Hades, but is too depressed about basically killing his wife to actually play anything at least at first. Throughout the game, Zagreus cheers Orpheus up by giving him nectar, a shoulder to cry on, and telling him tall tales about his adventures. None of said tales are true, but Orpheus always believes them, probably because the last time he was skeptical of the gods, his true love soul was taken away from him. This gullibility leads to Dionysus and Zagreus deciding to pull a prank on the musician. What kind of prank? Just take a listen. Maybe we could spin him a tall tale, something like how maybe you and I, like, we're connected or something. He'll buy it. Tell him. Tell him for me, yeah? Hey, Orpheus, you've noticed the resemblance between me and Dionysus, haven't you, mate? I'll tell you a little secret, but you have to promise not to tell. We're really the same god. You see, the Titans, they once tore me limb from limb, but then my heart was saved, and that's where Dionysus comes from. That is the connection between us. You understand me, mate? You heard that right. Zagreus tells Orpheus that he and Dionysus are really the same god and proceeds to relay the actual Greek myth to him, complete with his mutilation by the Titans. Then Orpheus, once again taking these claims a little too seriously, writes a whole ass song about it, which you can listen to in game and is surprisingly faithful to the real mythology. It says I'm really the bastard son of Zeus, but also indelibly connected to the god of wine and how your parents tore me to pieces, giving rise to mortals, but that I'm always going to be stuck here. So, to put this all another way, the game implies that almost everything we've covered about the real Zagreus today was just a prank, bro. Which is even more hilarious when you consider that Orphism was an authentic religion the ancient Greeks practiced that focused on death and the redemption of the soul. Practitioners of Orphism believed our bodies were inherited from the ash of the Titans and our souls were inherited from Dionysus, or Zagreus. In order to achieve salvation from the titanic material existence, one had to be initiated into the Dionysian mysteries and undergo a telete, a purification ritual where you experience the suffering, death, and rebirth of the god. For the game to imply that all of that, the story, the religion, the rituals, all came from what was supposed to be a joke between gods, it's an idea so ridiculous that I would actually believe it. But what about you? Have you played the Hades game before? Did you know that Zagreus was real? And what do you think about his very messed up origins? Share your thoughts, any and all of them, in a comment down below. Then make a blood sacrifice to those like and subscribe gods because they could very well bless me with a boost in the algorithm. If you want to stay updated on messed up origins news, like what topics are coming up next, or send me suggestions, you can follow me on social media. Just search John Solo on everything and you should find me or hit the links below. And hey, this message isn't for everyone. One, but if you want to watch me live stream games like Hades and God of War and talk about the mythology that inspired them, find me on Twitch at John Solo Live. For some reason, when you search me, nothing comes up, maybe because I just reactivated my account, but if you hit the link below or go to twitch.tv slash John Solo Live, I'll be there. But that's it for this episode, everybody. Thank you all so much for watching and especially for staying until the end. Don't tell the others, but I love you the most. I'll see you all again in just a few weeks when I dive into some of the folklore and myths that inspired the infamous antagonist of Coraline, the Beldum. Until then, my name is John Solo, and remember, John shot first. Thank you.